and her husband, Monaco, right? Aline and Robert Monaco share mm. their testimonies of how they overcame COVID-19. So let's just uh, walk on them as they share with us on tonight. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I mean, I just want to start um, by saying that I really never thought COVID would enter my life at any shape or time or place. But um, you will definitely know when it hits you. I mean, out of the blue, one Saturday night, I was in my recliner. And within 10 minutes, I went from chills to sweats to body aches to, to uh, just just wondering what is going on. I mean, I've had the flu before, but this was like like 20 times stronger, mm -hmm. 20 times quicker. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, you know, it was it is what it is. And you know, we had we had to deal with you know, we had to deal with some things. I mean, it was um I mean, for one thing, I mean, it's a good thing. I lost about 20 pounds. I mean, in the process, in about two, two to three weeks, and but the but the bad thing about that is you have no energy, so mm -hmm. you just stay in bed and you just don't do anything. And then when you do try to do anything, me personally, I had, I was losing my breath. I was so short of breath, I I couldn't. You know, my wife has kept going. You know, you're wheezing. You know, you can't. You know, you're breathing hard. And I was like, I couldn't tell other than the fact that, yeah, I'm not getting around like I used to. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll just go back, stay in the bed, just go back and stay in the bed. And that was one of the bad things about it. It was, um, you just, you, when you're quarantined, you just feel like you're, you know, it's, you're on your own island. You're alone type of thing. Um, you don't get to interact with anybody. The only interaction I had was with the phone and, you know, texting people and people text me. I was grateful. Somebody even wanted to know how I felt, you know, if I was doing okay. And that's, and it was just, you know, and uh, I mean, the one thing that struck me the hardest was just knowing that I had it. And I didn't want to know that I passed it to somebody. I mean, that would, you know that was going i mean my 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 daughter got it my best friend got it all I, at the same time they right. all got it at the same time and i had <laughs> been with them wow. for just a short period of time mm -hmm. you know like two days before i before this hit me and i'm going i sure as heck hope i didn't give it to them and if i did i i don't know what to tell them other than the fact that please please get tested and 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 the bad thing about my daughter is she's like a she's a third grade teacher mm. and school was coming up because this was january i mean this was july the the 20th. 18th when yeah. i got hit with this and i got tested the 20th and i'm going i don't want to you know if, if she can't work i felt i would have felt really really bad i mean me personally you know i i thought something was going to happen and luckily I was, you know, I was able to financially put something aside because I didn't, you know, I thought something might just happen. It may not be me, it might be my wife or somebody else. And I was hoping I could help somebody in the process. Right. And that comes to my final point. I mean, you know, or my final two points would be like, just realize that your health is more important than anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it means you got to stay at home, you got to stay at home. Um, and then, you know, it's like my last point was to realize that there are good people in this, in this world that will come and help you out. Like and you, you guys. And I want to say thank you. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I might know names, but I don't know faces. And I appreciate everything anybody did for me and my wife. <laughs> He's getting uh, upset. <laughs> He's well, crying. We, we love you. We, we love you. We know we love you guys. We love you guys. And, yeah. and that's what this is about. We're the body. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. body, we're, hey, we, we, any one of us, but we, you are a testimony. Mm -hmm. Right. 
You are a testimony, and I, now I'm mm-hmm. getting tears in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, and like what Robert was saying was that first afternoon he got sick. Well, I worked that Friday, Saturday. He got sick on Saturday, and of course, I'll, you know, you guys know with my kind of work, I don't get home until 9 or 10 o'clock. Well, I wasn't feeling well for about a day or two. And when I got home that night, he told me the symptoms. And I said, are you sure you're not getting a sinus infection or it's your allergies acting up? Because we have problems with our allergies all the time. He said, no, I think I have the COVID. He said, this is not anything I have ever experienced before. And he had a fever for about five days. Mm. Mm. And so I'm, I'm just thanking God that I was not any sicker than what I was. I was sick maybe for about five or six days, just Mm -hmm. staying in the bed. And I was up more than he was because every time he would get up, he would just either get up to go to the bathroom, go back to bed or get up and eat and go back to bed. Get another 64 ounce bottle of Gatorade and drink that down during the day. I don't, I've never drank so much Gatorade in my life. (laughs) And, uh, it was like, you know, all of you guys started intervening, and we had immediate family that was leaving food at the door and stuff because we said, God knows, we don't want y'all to get it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, yeah, it was just, um, it happened so fast. It's almost like a blur now, you know, because it was just like bam, 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 bam. And then, um, Shana, when I saw you Saturday and you asked me to speak, about the COVID, about the time, you know, um, you and I talked, I was going to tell you about some things that happened after the COVID experience <clears throat> during all mm-hmm. this, but I said, no, I'm, since you asked me to speak tonight, mm-hmm. I would bring that up tonight. Mm-hmm. But um, I probably would not have known this or say now that what we have gone through during the midst of COVID um, Mm -hmm. if I had if we had not experienced these things but I definitely know that what we've gone through here the last month was an attack from the devil because we've had some other things come about Um, you know one thing led after the other and I said, no, this is more than just COVID, you know, because lo- normally if you're going to get over COVID, you're just going to get over that and be on about your business. So you want to tell them about, um, no? No. Okay. <laughs> no, not really. He, bet. he was already feeling bad about two weeks ago. Um, you know, we, we really started having this bad, bad rain. I guess you could say not to say we don't have, bad weather raining but it started back up was it a week ago it was oh god it was a tuesday a week ago tuesday he's got everything written down on his calendar it was tuesday the 11th on the 11th so his phone died well here he has you know he's still testing positive for covid and i'm trying to get all my stuff straightened out with my job and getting emails and then it's like all this paperwork to fill out for right. short-term disability. So his phone, phone his phone died. His phone, uh, it's been on wits end for, I don't wow. know, the last year or two. So we get in the car. He probably shouldn't have gone, but that's okay because he wants to try to help out as much as he can. So we go to the T-Mobile place right on Atlantic. And so we know all the flooding uh areas on Arlington Road in Atlantic because we live off of Arlington Road in our in Atlantic uh-huh. Boulevard. So we go to the T Mobile place on Atlantic. It was about five or about four thirty five o'clock. It started pouring down rain. I mean we had to run to the car. We were going down Atlantic and all of a sudden out of nowhere, like I said, we know the roads there, you know, which side of Atlantic floods, all of a sudden the car just shut off we were in water yeah. up to each side of our doors yeah well, i couldn't see it we couldn't see it until it was there and some cars even went past us and i don't know how the heck they did it but um yeah um sort of make a long story short on that and uh luckily there was a gentleman that helped 
helped us get out of there. And he towed us up to a, a business so we could park the car and just leave it there. And he tried to jump it and it wouldn't do anything. No, no current, no nothing, no could. You turn that battery and there was nothing. The engine light. No nothing. The battery light, none of the lights came on. So we tried, so we thanked the guy and he actually brought us home. And then we said, well, we'll go back tomorrow. Well, we tried to, we go back tomorrow. Where we at, left the car. Right. Luckily we uh, talked to somebody, said call this company to get it towed. Well, that was like 9.30 in the morning. Uh, by about 2.30 in the afternoon, the tow towing company finally came. So we had to wait a little while. Aline did some things on the phone while, you know, we were waiting by the car, in the car, uh, my car. And um, and then we tow got towed to Nissan. On Atlantic, on thank Atlantic. goodness it wasn't yeah, that far cars. from the house. So we get, uh, I talked to a service guy before and he said, well, they'll run a test on it, blah, blah, blah. So we get a phone call or Eileen gets a text the next day saying that the engine is gone. The we engine a, was flooded out. Flooded. <laughs> we need a whole new rebuild engine. He told us the cost and then it was like, oh my gosh. I totally lost it, y'all. <laughs> I totally lost right. it. <laughs> and, um, and it was a, it was a humbling experience because I felt bad because I was the one driving the car. Mm -hmm. um, and I blame myself. He, but mm -hmm. I told him not to blame himself. He, you know, yeah. it was just something that happened. Right. So and now, I, now the car, we, so thank God the kind of insurance we had on the Geico. I had switched uh, car insurances about six months ago from State Farm to Geico. Make sure that you guys have comprehensive, <laughs> comprehensive. on your car insurance because you know, you, you get the normal collision, but make sure you got comprehensive because that'll pay for flooding. Uh, if your car is set on fire or, or, or for some reason is, is, you know, on fire and or if your car is stolen. So make sure y'all have that. And I didn't even realize I had it. Well, thank God we got a call from the claims adjuster the other day and they're paying for a rebuilt engine because otherwise yeah. we'd be having to get another wow. car yeah. Or, yeah. Or this was going on while you guys were dealing with COVID. yeah yeah wow right. so when i saw you saturday shana when you had asked me to speak tonight i said well i'll wait and talk about all that tonight <laughs> okay gotcha so well, we here yeah, I don't want to keep you, but we had a couple other things happen. But you know, as frustrating as as bad as it was, um, I just praise God right. because I, you know, I know that He knows and we know that there's a reason why we're still here. There's so many, I in a way, and I know this might sound weird. In a way, I feel bad or maybe a little bit guilty because there's so many people that got the COVID and they're gone now, mm -hmm. you know, and I deal with death and dying every day because I'm a hospice nurse. But I can say mm -hmm. that personally, this thing has, has kind of affected me that way. I mean, I know we are all going to go one day, but God spared us through this. I mean, it wasn't obviously our time to go. I mean, we didn't get any sicker, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it really, it really touched close to home as far as the death and dying effect of all this. I guess personally for me, because that's what I do every day as a hospice nurse. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, question. So, you, I'm, I'm still just taking all of this in. Yeah. Um, like you said, there, there's a couple of other things that have happened but too, yeah, but yeah. that was a big, big one. That was the start of everything. That wow. was a real biggie. Well, how has this experience changed your, uh, just changed you, let's say, in the spirit? How did uh, it change I'll just, you? I'll just, I'll just say this. I mean, it was like, 
Um, I may not have been the most spiritual person. I do believe in God, and it was, mm -hmm. you know, and and you know, if I can get to church, I'll get to church and do all you know the mm -hmm. things, you know. Um, but it was just like I just had the moment where I just had to say, "This is this is this is God's hands. Mm -hmm. This is God. This is whatever's happening." He wouldn't get. He wouldn't put it upon me if I couldn't handle it. Mm. And you know, about to shout. I'm a, okay, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I, we'll handle it. We'll do with it. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll we'll try to do the best that we can. And yeah. we'll take it day by day. Amen. And that's about it. All anybody can do. Yeah, and um, mm. you know, Shane, it was like I was telling you uh, and some of you ladies that were on the well last week that it brought Robert and me together um, because not to say that we didn't I didn't appreciate him for who he is and what he does but I just appreciate him that much more it, it just brought us closer together because we were experiencing the same things you know that kept us connected and it was almost like, um, how can I say it? Even though we had a lot of emotional support from you guys, we were kind of like, like on our own journey, I guess is the best mm -hmm. way to mm -hmm. say it over here in our own house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, going through something. And we, then, like I said, we, you, we needed each other. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> it, you you yeah. definitely had to draw off of yeah. one another. We needed each other. So yeah. as far as the quarantine, you know, before he and I experienced the COVID, you know, it was pretty much going about our own business, and you know, we already supported and and um, each other, but we had to support each other that much more because it was just like there was nobody else i mean we had to you know right. it's almost like it kind of reminds me of like being on um what's that show survivor the, or, in a way yeah, yeah but not to that extent you know right. what i'm saying you get the gist of yeah it. you don't have anybody else that you can rely on mm -hmm. and then like i said a few minutes ago about the um the hospice aspect, it just made me realize that much even more how much you should value life yeah. Yeah. and mm -hmm. respect life that much more. And, you know, cause God only knows he's the only, he's, he knows why I'm still here. And while he's, my husband's still here, mm -hmm. we could be buried under the ground right now or be mm -hmm. cremated. Right. Well, you know what? You you know why uh, God left you here just to encourage you. He's mm -hmm. not done with you guys. No, right. it's it's, it's for the testimony. It's for the glory. Mm -hmm. It's for just like what you guys are doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you're sharing uh, your faith. You're sharing your testimony, and the Bible says that they overcame by right. the word the of their testimony yeah. and the blood of the yeah. lamb yes right you know so this is a part you guys were a part of god 